Hello, this is Juliana. I talked about the federal withholding law, the FRIPTA, in my other video presentations. Did you know that the state of California also has a law regarding withholdings, which is separate from the federal law? When I tell my sellers this, it is either an aha moment or an uh-oh moment. So today, I am going to talk about the withholding requirements for the state of California. Let's go ahead and get right to it. Before I do so, let me go ahead and go through the disclaimer with you. The information contained in this video is only intended to provide a guide to the various transactions to which the information is applicable. No representation is made as to the legal validity of the information or the adequacy of it in any specific transaction. The information contained should only be used after consultation with legal and financial counsel. So, what is this withholding? California Code of Regulations, Title 18, Sections 18662-0 et al., states that all real estate that is held in California, once it is sold, requires this withholding. And the withholding amount is going to be 3.33% of the sales price. For the state law, the prepayment of income taxes is very important. So when you sell a property in the state of California, you're going to need to pay taxes on your profit. So the California Franchise Tax Board is going to be the collector and the monitor of this law. And any seller has the obligation to pay these taxes on the property before he goes out of state or before he leaves the country. The escrow agent must, at that time, turn in a government 593 form that is collected on every real estate transaction. And if there's withholding, the money gets turned in at that time too. You're thinking, wow, that is a lot, 100,000 transactions a year. Yes, there is a lot of transactions in California, but there are exemptions that the sellers can take, uh, can avail themselves of. Some of the common exemptions that can be used are as follows. If the sale price is 100,000 or less, then there is no withholding at all. It's automatically exempt. Now, the one that we use the most is the principal residence exemption. If the seller has used the property as his principal residence for at least two out of the five years prior to the sale, then it is going to be exempt. If there's a loss, if the seller has a loss or a zero gain, that is also going to be an exemption, but he does need to fill out part six of that 593 form. Now, if this is a corporate entity seller, now that's a seller who's a corporation, an LLC or a partnership, and they are qualified and registered to do business in California and has a permanent res place of business in the state, then they are also exempt. However, they cannot be a single member entity, meaning that the ownership of this corporation or LLC uh, or partnership is one person only. That will not qualify them. If the seller, is going to be placing all of the net proceeds that he gets from this sale into the purchase of another income property under the IRS 1031 tax deferred code, then he'll be exempt. However, he needs to understand that if not all the funds that he gets from the sale is used for the purchase, then the withholding is going to take place on the funds that are not used. If the seller is going to be doing an installment sale in which the seller is actually lending part of the money uh, of his net proceeds to the buyer as a loan, then the buyer will be paying him in monthly installments in the future. An installment sale can also qualify for an exemption, except that it's a little different. The first part of the withholding is actually done at the closing. When there's a sales price and you subtract off the loan that you're giving to the buyer, you come up with the equity part of it. This equity part of it is going to need the withholding of 3.33%. 
Then as the months go through and the buyer pays the seller back on monthly payments, every time they make a monthly payment, that principal that they're paying off needs the 3.33% withholding on that amount before the seller gets the balance. So if you have an installment sale, sale, I would very strongly urge that you talk to your escrow agent and make sure that you understand all the ramifications of this installment sale and the withholding. Now, how do we calculate on the withholding? The straight out withholding is 3.33% of the sales price. If, however, the seller feels that his potential gain is going to be less than that amount, he can do an alternative withholding. And he has to complete part six of the 593 form. He will put in the sales price, he'll put in the selling expenses, and then he'll put in the purchase price that he did, uh, that he had of the property. He'll put in all of the repairs, all the money that he puts in, and then he will calculate this. When you have the sale price and you subtract the purchase price, you're going to get an estimated gain or loss on uh, number 28. Line 28, if it shows a loss, then there's going to be no withholding. If line 28 shows a gain, a positive number, then they will have to click the alternative withholding calculation amount and charge and get charged 12.3% of that amount on line 28. Now, after you complete all this and give this to the, to the escrow agent, please be sure that you contact the CPA on how you calculated it. Because as you know, you're going to be doing the income tax return and if your CPA is going to help you at the end of the year, he's going to need to see all these figures that you have submitted. Tax identification numbers. I mentioned this in the, uh, in the FRPTA presentation. In California withholding law, if the seller does not give or does not have a social security number or an individual tax identification number, then none of those exemptions are going to be allowed. We are going to withhold 3.33% of that uh, sales price. However, the seller can still do the alternative withholding amount. But think about it. If you let the, st let the state take away the alternative withholding amount and you don't give them a tax ID number, where are they going to put the money? So you're going to need to declare income tax on your tax on your taxes and you're going to need to give them the tax ID number at the closing so that they can properly put your alternative withholding amount into your tax ID number for your income tax reporting. When do you claim the withholding? Well, first of all, the funds are going to be sent by your escrow agent to the Franchise Tax Board no later than the 20th day of the month after the month that the transaction has closed. The escrow agent will provide the seller with all copies of the documentation that they sent in, and the seller will then attach documentation, these documentation to their income tax return. If too much withholding was made, then the overpayment is going to be returned by the Franchise Tax Board. If there's not enough, then the seller is going to have to pay the difference. Let me give you some fun facts on this withholding from the Franchise Tax Board. First of all, this withholding applies to all sellers of California real estate, whether you live in the state or not, whether you're a foreigner, whether you are a resident, whether you are a non-resident, it applies to everybody. There are exemptions that you can uh, you can avail yourself of with, from this withholding, but you have to have a social security number or a tax identification number. Number three, an LLC has a special uh, qualification. If you are a single member LLC, meaning there's only one individual that owns this LLC, then you cannot qualify for the LLC entity exemption. They're going to look at you as 
a individual. You can use the alternative withholding calculation because you might only need to pay a lesser amount. So go ahead and try the alternative withholding first. If the seller has uh, completed the 593 form and they willfully made a false statement, then they are going to be in a little bit of trouble because the form is signed under penalty of perjury. This form is sent to the Franchise Tax Board by the escrow agent. So they will have that form in which you signed and you declared. Number five, if the seller is giving a loan to the buyer from his proceeds, then the seller and the buyer is going to need help from the escrow agent to figure out how to pay. So be sure you contact your escrow agent at that time. Okay, today my escrow officer t-shirt says, I may be wrong, but I highly doubt it. As you can see, this is my escrow officer t-shirt. We don't take ourselves very seriously. We escrow officers, we, we like to have some fun in life too. So thank you for watching. This is Juliana. I hope that you will like me. I hope that you will be sure to subscribe. And I'm going to have part two of the California withholding come out. It has to, it deals with questions and answers that you might have. So be sure that you tune in. Thank you for your time.